I have a topic that no, I've heard nobody talk about, and real people might not like it. So I'm preparing you for, for I'm preparing you. Are you ready for this? Okay. <laughs> Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. The Bills are making short-term investments, with the exception to Mitch Morris, short-term investments along the offensive line. Oh boy. Right? Yep. So they're fixing the line, and we talked about this in an episode last week. Yes. So they're making these short-term investments along the line. Okay. Now, that could be for a couple reasons. One, you're bringing in veterans to kind of help Allen along as you slowly work in guys that you bring in on your own, right? Okay. You're going to slowly acquire offensive linemen and bring them in and teach them and, and bring that system along and make a smooth transition across the line. Okay, mm -hmm. that's possibility one. Possibility two is your offensive line is not salvageable and this was the best way you could go to fix it. So you made the smartest investments you could, although short term, yes. right? And you're still looking for those big pieces in the draft. That's option two. Option three is... Um, you made all short-term investments because um, you think Brian Dable's a possible disaster and you don't want to make any long-term investments uh, in players across the offensive line because you aren't confident Brian Dable's going to make it to the season. But what happens if the off if this team starts 1-6 and six and the offense is putting up 10 points a game, right? Are these investments... Are they being made because you really aren't super confident with where you are with the offensive coordinator? Well, okay, that's a very interesting topic. I think the, the vet, this is the process, as we mentioned before, mm -hmm. I mentioned last week. I think this is the process that they go through. Um, we're not going to spend all this money on this guy. And, and as you stated last week, you know, you, you, could, you could miss. If you miss on him, you got all that money invested in him. You have to play him. Uh, making these little short-term investments and stuff, you get the best out of the players because they want to play for a long-term, longer-term deal. So they're always on edge. You get the um, <clears throat> you got experience coming in of guys that have already been in the league and know how to play. Now you're gonna see if they can gel. I think that would be an addition to what they've already done in the process. I think it protects the team itself against. Either Dable is horrible or Dable jumps. Okay. You're still protected. But here, this is what we do. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And we're always bringing guys in on two, three-year deals, free agents. And then when that big fish comes along, we draft him. And we got him. All right? Got Allen. Got, uh, got uh, Edmonds. Got White. Okay. All right. We got these guys. These are our cornerstones. All right? And then if, uh, if, if guys happen to leave, those cornerstones are still there. As the as the nucleus of your team, so I I think you think you're going to upset people by saying that, but well, Dable's probably gone or he's not gone. It could be either way. It could be either the Bills are, are not performing as an offense as they should. You got a lot of new pieces. I don't expect them to come out of the gates firing anyway. Right, but you I brought really in don't. pieces that are change hardy. Right, you brought in guys who have who have had to suffer through change. Yeah, but they're. They're bet the pieces that they brought in are better than what they left 2018 with. I agree. However, yeah. they don't they haven't played together yet once. Yeah. Right. Okay. If the team you have right now had to play a game they be against the 28, yeah, 2018 team, the 2018 team would beat them. Thump them. They thump them. Yeah, because 2018 has played together, and this team hasn't. So I don't expect them to come out of the gates firing. Was this a point made that? You just want to talk about Debo being gone? Or? Well, I listen. I've got a skin in this game because I've got a Seagram's bet with the Rock Pile report that Debo doesn't finish the doesn't season as an offensive four, right? No, no, just doesn't finish the season as offensive. I court. thought your addendum was no, 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 no. There's no, no, no. There's no stipulations. It's Debo does not start and finish the season as Bills offensive coordinator. That that's that's the bet right now. Um, so with that being said, again, full transparency, I've got some skin in this game. So here you go again. You go again. Anyway. <laughs> the point still remains that this team right now 
is not fully invested in the offense, even with all the investments that they made in the offense. They're not fully invested in the long-term solutions on the offense because the only one that you brought in that's a long-term solution is Morris. That's it. That's all you've done. And you brought in a bunch of, of two-year contracts. The rest, that's it. You brought in a bunch of two-year contracts. Prove it. Contracts. Prove it right. But if they prove it, then... Yeah, you still have money to pay them. Uh, straight. You still have money to pay them, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. But the fact remains that this team could change offensive coordinators and completely change systems, and you're not committed to any of the offensive linemen. If you want to go zone blocking and these guys don't fit that, you can walk away from almost all of them right now. You really could. If you bring an offensive coordinator that wants to go zone blocking and Dable doesn't, you could, you're you not looking for the same offensive lineman you have right now. So you move away, right? Yeah. It's you, When you change offensive coordinators, you're changing systems, you're changing, you're changing the type of players that you need. So the Bills right now are protected against the Brian Dable meltdown next year because the contracts that they brought in this year they can walk away from. Or departure if he does well. That's what I'm trying to say. The other the other side so of the coin saying, is... So you, what, you, what you mean there is if, let's say the Bills go 13-3 and three and Dable becomes a head coach yeah. candidate. And okay. so now three out of the five pieces that you signed, minus Morris, mm -hmm. performed well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you got Morris, three other linemen, and Dawkins. They've gelled. Now they're a cohesive unit. You sign two out of the three to long-term deals because you know you got to extend White and Milano and all those other guys if they perform. And you got that, you got that across the board. Now you have a solid line that has chemistry for anyone coming in. Mm -hmm. So it works either way. If, you, if the line performs horribly and Dable gets fired, you know, you, these guys are these guys are interchangeable. But if they perform well, then they're proven deals. They proved it. You could sign them to extend them. So you don't have to go looking for those pieces anymore. Yeah, that's the one thing that's getting me a little bit is the timetable with these contracts. Because, again, a lot of them are two-year deals. Yeah. So let's look two years down the road. That's Milano. You need to extend Milano. You need to extend Trey White. No, like You need December. to extend Dawkins. This no, December. No, no, no. I'm talking about when these deals expire, right? When these two-year deals that we signed all the linemen to, when those two years expire... Oh, it's the same time. Are... It's the same time as you need to pay. You're going to need to make a decision on Dawkins. You need to make a decision on Milano. You need yeah. to make a decision on Trey White. Like that, that's all in the same time frame. So I, I suffer a little bit with the two-year deal thing. I get it, right? But they signed everybody to a two-year deal. So I, I understand that you're protecting yourself against poor play or poor performance just in the offense in general. But it does create a little bit of a problem because you're going to have all these contracts hitting free agency over. What you're saying is that what they're currently doing, your roof is leaking. Mm -hmm. All right, what you're doing is you're putting a bucket where the roof is leaking underneath. These current linemen are buckets mm -hmm. that you're putting until you can fix the roof with what you need. These are gonna these are gonna suffice right now. Yeah. Okay. So we flex sealed the roof is what we've done. Okay. You went up there with some flex seal. You're good for a little while, <laughs> right? You're yeah. good for a little while with can of flex seal. Right? But there's going to come a time where that's not going to be functional anymore. And, and you're going to have to look at either putting another layer of Flex Seal on again or... Maybe that's the process, man. Just keep keep getting Flex Seal. It's just so risky because you're always having to reestablish... It is. It is. But you're getting across the offensive line. But you're getting established guys beforehand. Like like you said, all the signings they had, they could be depth signings. They could be not. They're probably protecting themselves against the draft. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're thinking about trading up all their picks to go get a big fish as far as a tackle. Or, Maybe. But, you know, all these things considered. And if they miss out on trading up for that tackle, then they yeah, they're still, have the They're still protected. They're always protected. But it, maybe the process is that they're going to have all these guys that know how to block they've been in the league they do all this stuff because those guys are always recycled anyway every year there's a bunch of guards and tackles that nobody wants for, for whatever reason that the Bills will see value in come on in we know you can develop chemistry with this guy this guy this guy uh, and, you, and you can do that now am I saying that's the goal no they want some long sustaining tackles and guards they got Morris for four you got Dawkins they, 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 you feel like they're going to extend him unless he has just a dumpster fire of a year um, and then these new guys are like, okay, you guys are going to fight. It's like, the, it's like the part in the Joker, or the part in, the, in Batman when Joker breaks the uh, he breaks the Q, Q stick in half. He goes, oh, we got only got one for out. one spot. Yeah. Make it quick. You know what I mean? So yeah. all these other guys are going to be, you know, which means 
the bottom line of all this, of what they're doing and what we're discussing right now, is that you're going to get the best play out of all of these guys. Because no one's sitting on a five-year, six-year deal for an insane amount of money. Not even Dawkins. Every, everyone they brought in to make it more than Dawkins right now. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Significantly more than Dawkins. It's crazy. Yeah. That's what's happening here. It's the survival of the fittest. Whoever could stay there and perform the best, gets who gets stay. their shot gets to stay. Whoever, all right. And if you cut your losses, you're not taking a hit on the chin for dead cap. Right. Who cares? Yeah, a lot of those deals really didn't have signing bonus money attached to them. No. So, <laughs> no. You don't, you don't really care. Hi, you don't have a job right now. Yeah. Or, yeah, you're kind of out of it. This we'll gonna, give you a shot. This is going to be a dangerous team to make. It's going to be a tough team to make. There's gonna be some fights in camp at Fisher. I gotta feel that. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a hard training camp. Because you gotta think, based on the salaries and or draft positions, Naseki, Morse, and Dawkins are the only three that you can with pencil in as a light likely pencil. play. Lightly, likely but, play. Okay. I mean, maybe you could put Morse's in pep. But yeah. the, that notwithstanding, Naseki and, and Dawkins are your tackles right now. And then you got Feliciano, Span, uh, Teller. Long. Long. Oh, good Lord. All these guys. I'm forgetting somebody, I know. Uh, but the, the point is, all right, you guys Waddle. are going to fight. Huh? Waddle. McDermott. McDermott. Cyril's. There's Jesus, and the list goes on Jesus. and on. But that's the, that's the process. I'm leaving. That's the process. Now, that could all change if they draft one. I mean, I don't think it changes that much, right? You draft when you still don't have to start them. Well, the process the, then... The whole idea is to start your first-round pick or your second-round pick. Like, you draft them to be starters, but you don't have to start them. Yeah, but then you start to get the blueprint of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. okay. This draft is going to teach us a lot. Yeah, because if they draft an offensive tackle in the first round with their first pick without trading back, then it becomes their moves in the offseason were insurance if they yeah. couldn't get him. Now... If they don't, the process is them trying to survival of the fittest, cheap contracts, let's go. Mm -hmm. Earn your next contract. They, right, they want to spend their money other places. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, this draft is going to tell us a lot I about it. But, again, I'm still on the fence. I guess this is about perspective, right? If you want to see the way that they've approached the offseason as they're protecting themselves against the Dable explosion, you can see it that way. Yeah. If you want to see it as they're protecting themselves against the offense exploding and Dable leaving for head coach job, you can see it that way. Yeah. If you want to see it as they're protecting themselves against getting a tackle in the draft that they're really looking for and they miss out, you can see it that way. Like you can see it this way. You, there's covered. a bunch of different ways to see this. It's all about perspective. All right. I'll bend on that. You said it perfectly. The Bills have set their team up in such a way, financially and roster, that they could take whoever they want. Yeah. And that's the thing I think is, is driving everyone nuts because you could see five or six positions mm -hmm. of them going with, with number nine if they don't trade it back, which I, which I, still, I believe to my core they're going to trade it back. I, I'm, I fundamentally, I agree with you. Uh, you could see, okay, I could see why they went with Quinn and Williams. Oh, I could see they went, or they went with Jonah Williams. Oh, I could see why they went with DK Metcalf. Oh, they took Big Hawkinson? Yeah, well, they, they got rid of Clay and they signed a couple of they, they signed a tackle to play tight end. You know what yeah. I mean? So, all of these, but that's why everyone's like, where are they going? Yeah. What are they going to do? 